Hi, it's Krista with KristaQuilts.com today with a video on how to make triangle in a square blocks using the Trirex rulers. So these are some of my favorite rulers right here. They make a triangle in a square block up to six inches finished. Now, if you want to make a larger block, you'll need a larger ruler. It's a different brand from Creative Grids. It's the same shape. These make blocks up to nine inches, but they're a lot more expensive. So I usually just try to make smaller blocks up to six inches using the Tri-Rex. For the triangle in a square, you're gonna need two fabrics. You'll need a triangle fabric, and I actually have three different fabrics because I'm gonna make three different squares, and then you'll need a background fabric. So I'm going to make triangle in a square blocks as part of my infrastructure quilt along to make this quilt and make these fun diamond and triangle blocks. So once you have your fabrics together, I'm gonna to show you how you cut them out and sew them to create the block. To cut out my triangle in a square blocks, I'm first going to start with the center triangle. I've cut a couple of them out already, and now I'm gonna cut this other one out of this fabric. I'm using Geopop, my fabric line with Bettertex. Now, you can fussy cut the design if you want, or just let it come randomly. This one would be a fun print for fussy cutting, but I'm not worrying too much about where the print is gonna end up. Now, in order to cut these shapes, you'll notice that you're gonna end up with a very blunted end and two pointy ends. That is correct. So when you're lining up your triangle of the Tri-Rex tools, you wanna to make sure that this blunted end is lining up at the top of the strip you're cutting and the line of the unfinished size is down at the bottom. Now this triangle can make blocks up to six inches finished, but if you're making a smaller block, you're just gonna line it up on the line and you can check the pattern for which size strips you need to cut. So the blunted end is at the top and I'm gonna have two pointy tips off the sides. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're lining this up, if you slide your triangle too far over to one side, you'll cut off too much fabric and you won't have a full triangle. If you slide it too much over to the other side, you'll waste too much fabric. So I'd like to get it as far over to my left as I can without wasting very much fabric. Once the line is lined up here and the blunted um, end is at the top of the strip, I'm going to hold this firmly and I'm going to cut on both sides of the triangle to release it. And then on this side, this on the other side is a little bit funky. If you have a rotating mat or you could rotate the strip to make that a little easier, this little piece right here is gonna be scrap. I didn't cut all the way through, so I have to kind of trim it off right there. That's gonna be a scrap piece, and now I've cut my first triangle. If you want to, you can layer a couple of strips together to make it go faster. Now here's where the fun happens. You're gonna rotate the ruler so that it's upside down. And again, the blunted tip is lining up with the bottom of the strip so that you'll get pointy tips at the other two end. Once I check all my lines that everything's lining up correctly, I can cut again from the other side to get another triangle. And I'm gonna keep, I need to, uh, obviously I need to change my blade to get a sharper cut, but I'm going to rotate back and forth so that I get these triangle shapes every single time. And again, the pattern that you're working on will normally tell you how many of these triangles you need to cut out. So once you have all of your center triangles cut out, I would keep them lined up with the blunted edges at the top. The next thing we need to do is we need to cut out the background triangles from the next ruler. So I just cut my center triangles using the try tool. That's one part of the uh, pieces that I need for my triangle and a square blocks. But now I need to cut the background and I'm gonna be cutting the background using the Rex tool. And I call these triangle pairs because I need to be cutting two of them at a time. Now you'll notice as I have my strip here, it's folded wrong sides together so that when I make one cut, I'm gonna get two triangles. And even more importantly, because this uh, quilt template, this quilt ruler is not symmetrical, it's, n it's a mirror image of itself. Whenever I rotate it and cut it, I need to cut two at a time and I'm gonna get mirror images. If I were only cutting through one layer, I would only get one type of triangle facing one way, but I need mirror images. So you'll see what I mean when I actually cut it. So now the first thing I need to do is I like to square up my edge so I have a straight edge and I can use a ruler or I can just use the uh, side of this triangle to do it. I wanna make sure I'm cutting off my selvages and I start with a nice squared up edge. So I'm gonna cut pretty firmly, square that up nicely, and now I can line up that freshly cut edge 
with the edge of my Rex tool. So I'm gonna, um, the width of the strip is going to be the unfinished size of the block that I'm doing, which is gonna be in your pattern, but it works for any size. So I'm gonna line up the cutting line and I've got the blunted edge on top, just like I did for the center triangles. And now it's gonna be a lot easier to cut because all I have to do is trim that off and I can pull this aside. Now, before I go on to the next set, I wanna show you something super important. Right now, this has a blunted edge, but I have to trim off this little piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna trim this off by lining it up, and there's a teeny tiny little piece that I'm gonna slice off right here along the edge. This is what they call the magic spot, so that when you've got two blunted edges right here, and when it comes to lining up the pieces to sew the block, it's gonna be a lot easier. So each pair that I do, I have to trim that little tip off. Now, when I open it up, you'll see that I have a left-leaning uh, triangle and a right-leaning triangle. It doesn't really matter, but if I were to rotate these, this is not the same shape. So this is why I need one pair of these to go with every center triangle. So now I just flip my piece back over here, I keep it all nicely together, and now I'm rotating the ruler, or the template, whatever you wanna call it. I call it a ruler, a template only cuts one size, rulers cut out multiple sizes. So now I'm gonna go along and I'm gonna trim up here, move it out of the way again, trim off that little piece. You could trim, you could cut out all your triangle shapes and then go back and trim those little blunted edges, but I like to do it as I go so that I know I haven't forgotten everything. So it takes a few extra seconds to line it up each and every single time and rotate it here. I can scooch it over, cut another one, rotate it, and it really becomes like clockwork, like so second nature once you cut these out. So continue to cut out as many background pairs, as many triangle pairs as you need to until you have enough to match up one pair for each block. Now I'm gonna sew them in the next little part, but let me show you what it's gonna look like. This is gonna be the center triangle, and then I'm gonna have one triangle on each side. Now one thing that's really, really important, if you mix them up, let me show you, this is the wrong way. If you mix them up the wrong way, that's not gonna work. You wanna make sure that you put them in place correctly, and in the next little section, I'll show you how I'm gonna sew those together. To make the triangle in a square block, you need one center triangle with the blunted edge at the top, and a pair of left and right side triangles with the blunted edges at the bottom. So starting on either side, you're gonna flip a side triangle over to the center triangle, and this is where you're gonna line up the little blunt edges. At the bottom, you're gonna line it up so that the blunt edges are basically touching the sides, and you have a little tiny triangle sticking out at the bottom. And if you flip over the other side, you'll have just a little tiny bit of triangle peeking out. So you're gonna sew this with a quarter inch seam, and the idea is by the time you get to the bottom, the quarter inch seam will match up to this little area right there. This will end up looking like this once you've sewn one side, and you're gonna have a little bit of a triangle tip peeking out right there. Don't cut that off yet because it comes in handy when you're lining up the other side. And before I sew the other side, I will press my seams open so I get a nice flat block. Once I've pressed it, then I can take the other side of the triangle and I can line up the little tips right here. And then down here at the bottom, I'll have the little blunted edge meeting the side. Once that's all sewn, then I have one finished triangle in a square block and I trim off the excess uh, triangles, they're called dog ears sticking out, and I give the block a final press. In the next little short video, I'm gonna show you how I actually sewed this. <laughs>
are all of the triangle in a square blocks that I need for my infrastructure quilt. If you would like to join me, make sure you go to KristaQuilts.com. I'm now going to sew them together with some other pieces to create this row. But if you were just making triangle and a square blocks, you could have some fun with them. You could turn them into little Christmas trees just by themselves, or you could turn them around and you could make cute little flags or little arrows or border designs, or like what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew two of them together to create this really cool diamond. Now when you do sew two of the triangle and a square blocks together, you're gonna have some extra on the side for your seam allowances. So go ahead and sew up your blocks and feel free to leave any comments that you have. Again, if you wanna join the infrastructure quilt along, that can be found at kristaquilts.com. See you later.